Okay, so this lecture we continue with differential amplifiers and we we'll look at a differential amplifier with a PMOS load. Last time we were looking at uh, the amplifier with a resistive load. And then we'll also look at, uh, well, we'll look at DC cases as well as AC differential cases. So these are our usual numbers. Uh, so this is our differential amplifier. Now we have two PMOS transistors instead of two resistors as the load, M3 and M4. And we of course assume that M3 and M4 are identical transistors. They have the same W and L the same as M1 and M2 are identical transistors. For our calculations, let us make VG5 this voltage as 0.6 volts. VT was 0.4 volts. So this is an overdrive of 0.2 and we'll make W by L of 1 and 2 to be 250 of 3 and 4, 500, which is double. Uh, of the NMOS. So what that does is the mu and C of W by L of the NMOS transistors is the same as the mu PC of W by L of the PMOS transistors because W L by L's are double for PMOS the mu PC ox is half. So both of them are equal to 50 milliamps per volt square. So all four have the same mu C ox W by L. Also, we make W by L5 equal to 500, which is this transistor, which is the double of these two. So that for uh, if the current here is 2ID and if this is ID, then the VG assays will be the same for both transistors. We have done this last time also. All right. So we calculate ID5 to begin with uh, M5 saturation current. So it is 0.2 by 2 into 500 into 0.6 minus 0.4 the VT and that turns out to be 2 milliamps. So the tail current is 2 milliamps. So in, uh, in a DC symmetrical case, each of the uh, branches will have a current of 1 milliampere. Now here is something we have to worry about for this circuit. How much should VGP be? to put M3, M4 in saturation because of course we want M3, M4 in saturation. We want to use this as an amplifier and we have, this is the peculiarity of this circuit that it has three current sources actually. This is a current source. These two are also current sources. So if this is 2 milliamps, we want M3 and M4 to carry 1 milliampere each uh, in a DC kind of symmetric when the input voltages are equal in the quiescent state. So we have to choose VGP such that M3, M4 have a saturation current of 1 milliamp. All right. So and of course, as we just saw, because of mu C ox W by L's are the same uh, and uh, well for M5 twice the mu, P, uh, mu, mu C ox W by L and twice the current. So for this current to be half of this current, the W by L being uh, the, what they are, the VGS of or VSG of M3, M4 will be equal to the VGS of M5. All right. So this, this is 0.6. So this has to be 0.6 also. So VGP has to be 2.4 volts. All right. So we have to choose this. Uh, make sure that we choose this such that that saturation currents of the, the M3, M4 are half of the saturation current of M5. This is very important and this is kind of uh, not easy to achieve in practice because of small variations in process and all that. But anyway, that's, a, that's something one has to be uh, careful of. Anyway, we'll talk about this a little more in chapter 9 when we discuss common mode feedback. All right. So we like last time we'll do a few cases, DC analysis cases. So we'll apply various sets of input voltages and think about solving the circuit. So today I'm not, in this lecture, I'm not going to solve most of the circuits. I'm going to let you solve uh, because I think you uh, already have enough background to solve them. All right. So we start with V in 1 equal to V in 2 equal to 1 volt. So this is 1. 
and we just saw that ID5 sat is 2 milliamperes. For this case, all transistors will be in saturation. Let's just quickly look at this. So, uh, if this is 1 volt, then the VGS, assuming M1, M2 in saturation, VGS is 0.6, so VS is 0.4 volts. If VS is 0.4, M5 is in saturation because for M5 to go into triode, VS has to be less than or equal to 0.2 volts. So it is 0.4. So M5 is in saturation, M1, M2 therefore will carry 1 milliampere, M3, M4 are carrying 1 milliampere. How much are VO1 and VO2? VO1 and VO2 cannot be determined because these are both high impedance nodes, uh, M3, M1 both act as current sources. So this voltage is not known, we can only talk about its range. So the range is 0.6 to 2.8 volts. So 0.6 comes as 1 minus 0.4 and uh, 2.8 comes as 2.4 plus 0.4. So 0.6 to 2.8. So this is the voltage range for which uh, M1, M2 will stay in saturation and M3, M4 in fact. Yeah, all right. So next we say, well, what happens as we decrease V in 1 equal to V in 2. So we keep them equal, but we start decreasing them. So we just saw that for 1 volt, Vs is 0.4 volts. And we also saw that when Vs goes below 0.2, M5 is going to try out. So when V in 1 equal to V in 2 go below 0.8, so 0.8 here, 0.6 across M1, M2, so this will be 0.2. So when they go below 0.8, M5 will enter triode. All right. And when M5 enters triode, the current through M5 will become less than 2 milliamps. The circuit is still symmetric. So the currents in M1, M3 and M2, M4 will be equal. So whatever the M current in M5 is, it will divide equally on each side, but that current in each side will be less than 1 milliampere. If that is the case, uh, and which will be the case if V in 1 equal to V in 2 is less than 0.8 volts, then what happens to M3, M4? Will they stay in saturation? Well, they won't because now the current flowing through them is less than their saturation current, which is 1 milliampere. When we've kept the gate voltage of M3, M4 fixed. Therefore, M3, M4 will go into triode also. All right. So when V in 1 equal to V in 2 less than 0.8 volts, M5 goes into triode, M3, M4 also go into triode. Right, and if M3, M4 go into triode, that means that VO1 and VO2 will be close to 3 volts because the source drain voltage of M3, M4 will become small. And so if VO1, VO2 are large, then M1, M2 will stay in saturation because their drain voltages are quite large. Therefore, we will have M3, M4 in triode, M1, M2 in saturation, M5 in triode. All right, so that is the state of the transistors. I'm leaving it as homework to you to find the actual voltage, well, all voltages as well as the currents for the case of V in 1 equal to V in 2 equal to 0 0.6, which is less than 0.8 volts. All right, let's see the next case. So we say, what if V in 1 equal to V in 2 is less than 0.4 volts? 0.4 is a threshold voltage. So we are making these two voltages less than the threshold voltage. Less than threshold, M1, M2 have to turn off. If M1, M2 are off, no current flows anywhere, All right? Because there is no place for the current in M5 to flow or M3, M4 to flow. So no currents flow anywhere. What are the voltages? The voltage across M3 has to be the source drain voltage across M3 has to be zero because a current in it is zero. Similarly, M4. So VO1 and VO2 will become three volts. M3, M4 are on, but they are not carrying any current. Similarly, M5 is on, but it is not carrying any current. So Vs will become zero volts. 
all right so you get 0 and 3 0 at vs and 3 at the output nodes all right case 4 so from 1 volt we increase v in 1 equal to v in 2 what happens as we increase v in 1 equal to v in 2 first thing we say is well as long as m1 m2 stay in saturation the currents will stay 1 milliampere in each branch 2 milliamperes in m5 the second thing we say is if that is given that that is the case the vgs's of m1 m2 will not change they will stay at 0.6 volts so v in 1 and v in 2 become higher vs will become equally higher so that the vgs's remain constant so vs will become higher as v in 1 equal to v in 2 become higher which means that m5 will stay in saturation as v in 1 and v in 2 are increased from 1 volt m5 stays in saturation at okay what happens to m3 m4 well for knowing what happens to m3 m4 we have to know what happens to vo1 vo2 and we said that well as long as all these four are in saturation we really don't know vo1 vo2 so this becomes tricky what we recognize is that so okay two things we recognize if we do not include channel length modulation then these voltages are as we have seen impossible to determine but if we do include channel length modulation then we will realize that as v in 1 and v in 2 increase v o 1 and v o 2 of course they will be equal because the, the voltages are symmetric but they will decrease they will decrease slightly but they will decrease why because an increase at the gate voltage causes a decrease at the drain voltage the gain may be small but it that, that is the behavior of a, uh, a mosfet uh, in fact a single mosfet will do that this is just a load so as v1 increases vo1 if anything will reduce all right so we can we'll see this in the ac case right but so for now we are not including channel length modulation because we are doing dc cases but we say well we know that vo1 and vo2 will decrease so we say that m3 m4 will stay in saturation all right so that we can be confident of so what will happen is as v1 and v2 are increased simultaneously vo1 vo2 will decrease Therefore, at some point, M1, M2 will go into trial. All right, that is what will happen. Now, at what voltage, what input voltage does that happen? Is a it's a difficult question to answer without including channel length modulation. So we will not discuss it. All right, we'll just say well, at some voltage, the uh, transistors will go into trial, uh, and we are going, I, we leave it at that. Uh, so, if we make V in 1 equal to V in equal to 3 volts, right, kind of make it all the way up to VDD, then surely M1 and M2 will be in triode. Is that true? It's not sure. In fact, uh, you tried. So, I'm going to leave this for you. Solve this case. So, V in 1 equal to V in equal to equal to 3. Assume M1, 2 in triode and solve the circuit all right and see what happens if it turns out that the solution gives you that m1 m2 are not in triode then make v in 1 v in 2 3.5 all right and see what happens keep trying uh, honestly i have forgotten what what uh, at what voltage will uh, the uh, transistors m1 m2 will go into triode but it's a good interesting case all right if you get stuck, we'll discuss it in class. Okay, case 5, unequal input voltages. So we say, well, let's make one of them 0 or doesn't matter, anything less than 0.4 and another one we keep constant. So we're reducing only V in 2 and we are making it so small that M2 turns off. All right, is F2, M2 turns off, it doesn't carry any current. Then of course, M4 won't carry any current. And then the current in M5, M1 and M3 will be the same because those are the only three transistors carrying a current. Now, 
what happens to transistors which one uh, will be in saturation which one will be in triode so let's think about this this has a saturation current of 1 milliampere this has a saturation current of 2 milliamperes now they are all basically in series so carrying the same current so the current the transistor with the higher saturation current has to go into triode so m5 will go into triode right m3 will stay in saturation it will carry 1 milliamp so the current will be 1 milliamp through all these three transistors m5 will go into triode are we sure m3 will stay in saturation let us think about it v in one is one volt uh, so this current and this current are one milliampere and the input gate voltage has not changed so there is no reason why m3 should go into triode all right so m3 will stay in saturation so with that and what about m1 will m1 stay in saturation we don't know we think it will because what we expect to happen is that first of all if m5 goes into triode vs is going to decrease because the drain source voltage of m5 has to be smaller so vs has become small then this vgs has become large now whether that causes m1 to go into triode or not you will find out only when you solve the circuit so I am saying here it will stay in saturation but you will have to check if it does or not. The reason it may not is because its gate source voltage may become very large and if there is a very large gate source voltage then its uh, saturation current is larger. In fact M1 is in triode it is clear here so I am sorry. So let me just change this so M5 M1 will go into triode because its gate source voltage is larger uh, go into triode its gate source voltage is larger so its saturation voltage is large i mean sorry the saturation current is larger than one milliampere but the current flowing is one milliampere therefore it has to go into triode all right so that is the condition so anyway you solve this circuit uh, and find Vs and Vo1 as well as well the current is known current is 1 milliampere all right all right all right so these are the DC cases one cannot do more DC cases because what happens is because we are not including lambda the channel length modulation parameter there are a lot of cases which don't have a solution for this circuit all right so there is only a only so much one can do with DC analysis uh, if one ignores channel length modulation so these are five is enough cases all right let's go to ac cases we'll start by applying what are called as differential inputs which is uh, plus vd by 2 at one of the input terminals and minus vd by 2 at the other input terminal the dc is the same on top of it there are plus and minus ac so that's a differential input so that v in 1 minus v in 2 is equal to some differential mode input voltage vd and now we want to find the small signal output voltages vo1 vo2 we also want to find the small signal source voltage all right before we start the analysis let us remember that m1 and m2 are identical transistors and m3 and m4 are identical transistors and because V1 is equal to V2, the DC inputs are equal. GM1 and GM2 are equal. RO1 and RO2 are equal. Similarly, for M3 and M4. So with that, let us draw the small signal equivalent circuit, which is this. So this is M1, M2, RO3 and RO4 is equal to RO3. Similarly, GM1, GM1, RO1, RO1 and RO5 below. The inputs are plus Vd by 2 and minus Vd by 2. So Vgs1 and Vgs2 are not equal because the Vgs are not equal. Alright, now uh, let us put Vx equal to Vd by 2. Just define a voltage because that will make the analysis slightly less tedious. Uh, also, I want to note as we had seen this when we did the single-ended 
a resistive load and the CMOS uh, uh, common source amplifier. This small signal equivalent circuit is identical whether we have a PMOS load or a resistive load because for a PMOS you get RO3, for a resistor we will get the RD. Therefore, the analysis we do now is valid equally for resistive load as well as PMOS load circuits. All right, so I would like you to pause and solve this circuit and find VO1, VO2 and Vs. Uh, this is a very, very important analysis uh, because this is kind of the next level of complexity in doing small signal analysis from what we've done until now, which were simpler analyses. Now we have three nodes. Uh, so please pause, solve and then continue. Okay, so I have written the equations. I'm actually not going through them because they are just a bunch of KCL1, then simplified KCL1, KCL at VO2 and then simplified and then KCL at Vs or actually not. So, okay, so let us talk about this. So the first one is simply the KCL at the node VO1. The second is the KCL at VO2. This one is really not so let's go back so we wrote one kcl here one here here so if if we write a kcl here there will be five terms in the kcl but what we realize and recognize is that uh, if we do a super node like this and closing both m1 and m2 inside then the sum of uh, Vs by RO5 plus VO1 by RO3 plus VO2 by RO3 will be 0, right? That super node like that. And that will give us a much simpler equation than writing a KCL at Vs. So that's what we do. So we kind of exploit the, uh, spe the, the specific architecture of this circuit. So that is what this is. VO1 by RO3 plus VO2 by RO3 plus Vs by RO5 is 0. And then we simplify this and we get VO1 plus VO2 equal to minus RO3 by RO5 into Vs. So these are our, th our three equations. Now if we look at 1 and 2, there is a lot of symmetry there. So this VO1, VO2, RO1 plus RO3 is the same, minus Vs, RO3, 1 plus GM1, RO1, all the same. GM1, RO1, RO3, Vx, same except that there is a minus here and a plus here. All right now and we say see that the third equation has vo1 plus vo2 so we look at these and we say well let us add these two all right so if we add these two then we'll get vo1 plus vo2 so if we add we'll get vo1 plus vo2 into ro1 plus ro3 this and these two add they are the same so we'll get minus 2 vs ro3 1 plus gm ro1 and then the right hand sides cancel because 1 is minus, 1 is plus. So this equation is 1 plus 2. In this, now we say, well, V1, V1 plus V02 can be written in terms of Vs from here. So we substitute this here, and so we get minus RO3 by RO5 Vs, something minus 2 Vs, something equal to 0. This is an equation only in Vs multiplied by some big constant. And that constant, of course, is not zero because it is, if you look at it, the sum of, it is a sum of all positive numbers. So it cannot be zero, which means that Vs is zero. All right. So this is a beautiful quality or property of this circuit that Vs in this circuit is zero. All right. Let's look at this qualitatively for a minute. So we say, okay we have this differential amplifier we have some dc voltage is applied here so that everything is in saturation then on top of the dc inputs we apply plus vd by 2 here a minus vd by 2 here equal magnitudes opposite signs for the ac voltage so we say okay if this is some plus vd by 2 that will cause an ac current in m1 let us call that current id small id now, if a plus Vd by 2 causes a plus Id, then on this side, a minus Vd by 2 
will cause a minus id by symmetry or anti symmetry as it is sometimes called so if this is plus id and this is minus id then a kcl at this node gives the gives us that the current through m5 is zero because these two currents cancel each other now if this current is zero uh, but the in the ac circuit this is ro5 and the current through ro5 is zero that means the voltage vs is zero so this is a qualitative way of arriving at our quantitative conclusion the qualitative way is actually if you think about it not entirely convincing because when we say that well plus vd by 2 causes id uh, are we actually sure because generally the current in m1 will be gm vg s and we are saying well vg is plus vd by 2 so gm vg is plus id and then this is minus id but then one could argue saying that what about ro there is an ro in parallel on both sides and that is not that is not anti-symmetric all right because if this is plus id and this is minus id then the currents in the ro's are not opposite to each other and therefore this argument is nice to kind of uh, intuitively think about but it is not entirely convincing that is why of course we did the quantitative first the quantitative without any approximation does actually lead us to the conclusion that vs is zero all right so we know now that vs is zero and okay so vs zero is often called as virtual ground all right so what we are saying is that when differential ac voltages are applied to a differential amplifier then the source voltage the source terminal which is common to the two input transistors has zero volt okay the ac the ac volt is zero and this node is said to be at virtual ground virtual because this node is not actually connected to ground but the potential at this node is ground so it is virtually at ground and of course doing this uh, recognizing this simplifies our ac analysis as we'll just see in a minute uh, i want to note that this uh, phrase virtual ground is used in two very different contexts in electronic circuits one is this in a differential amplifier the other is in op amp circuits which you must be familiar with so if one of the terminals well, the positive terminal of an op amp is grounded and if it has negative feedback then the negative terminal is at virtual ground it is not connected to ground but the potential is very close to ground now these are two very different contexts and there is absolutely no theoretical connection between the two except only in both cases some terminal happens to be at a zero potential even though it is not connected to ground all right so let us uh, so now we can redraw the small signal circuit with the source terminal connected to ground for all practical purposes we can say well this is zero potential so we'll just ground it all right and now this is a very simple circuit to analyze this is simply a single-ended common source amplifier and we know the gain of it so we say vo1 is equal to minus gm1 ro1 parallel ro3 into the input vd by 2 this is an input minus vd by 2 so vo2 will not have the negative sign so this is the voltage gain of the well the differential voltage gain for a differential amplifier so if the input supplied are differential then this is the voltage gain we get all right okay in the next lecture we'll look at common mode inputs and arbitrary inputs actually we'll not look at the current mirror load uh, amplifier next time it will be the lecture after next